Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we are discussing the latest version of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Explorer 2. This is reference 226570, launched in 2021. It represents a mild but worthwhile while update of the 42 millimeter Explorer 2 that first launched in 2011. So it gets a new reference number, a new movement, and some new dimensions. But let's talk about those dimensions and then backtrack to the changes. 42 millimeters in diameter, the watch as I measure it is 12.4 millimeters thick. Though this watch is often described as slimmer, it is not slimmer than other 42 millimeter Explorer 2s that I have measured. You will see where the slimness comes in. It's in the lug profile. From lug tip to lug tip, again, no changes. 50 millimeters and from end link to end link it is 52.8 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs so what changed well what changed is that the end link of the bracelet is now 22 millimeters rather than the previous 21 as a result that extra half a millimeter was taken out of the lug profile on each side, which results in a slimmer lug profile, much like the redesign of the Deep Sea. Uh, it gives you a broader end link and slimmer lugs, so there's a better match between the width of the bracelet and the width of the case, as well as the grace of those squared off lug profiles. Now another change, and it's a small one, but it's measurable, is that the end link to end link distance has gone from 53.3 millimeters on the previous 42 Explorer 2. It is now 52.8 millimeters from end link to end link, so a small change, but measurable. Throwing it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see it wears well, but it wears exactly like the old watch did. Maybe it's a little bit narrower across the wrist, but half a millimeter is difficult to see with the eye, much less feel with the wrist. It's low enough that it will fit underneath the dress cuff, so if you wish, you can fit it underneath the tight sleeve. Because it is very broad across the wrist, I'm going to recommend it for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger. Taking a look at the bracelet, again, the end link is different. Everything else, very similar. It's a three-link design oyster bracelet with a taper. It has polished outer faces, satination across the top, removable links fixed by screws, and we get the easy link five millimeter tool-free adjustment so you can snap in, snap out. It allows you to make a quick on-the-fly change to the watch without requiring a tool, but if you do use a tool, there are three divots located inside the clasp, so you can move the spring bar, change the anchoring point of the bracelet and the clasp to fine-tune the fit. It is a double lock with a beak and a hook system, a spring-loaded lift lock. That's the first lock, and then there's a clamshell with a little kerf underneath, so you can dig your nail in and pull it open. We see the more graceful lug profile, but it's still the super case, sheer on its side, squared off on its end, lug hood satinated, case band polished, crown guard structure. That little slash means a twin lock crown in steel, screw down 100 meters of water resistance. Don't fix what's not broken. They kept the beautiful 70s-inspired metal bezel rather than caving to the temptation to put a ceramic bezel on this watch. It still has that strong visual link to the original 1971-1655, the original Explorer 2. So we have an outer face that's polished, we have a little bevel polished lip, and then we have this radial grain laid down by a lapping machine with the lacquered numerals and indices for reading the second time zone. And since the 16550 of the 80s, these have been true dual time watches. So unlike the original Explorer 2, which had a 12 hour hand and a 24 hour hand that were synchronized together, just like you see here, the Explorer 2 post 16550 has a secondary time zone that you can manipulate independently. So you have a 24 hour hand, you have a 12-hour hand, and those hands have changed. The hour hand, the 24-hour hand, and the minute hand no longer have blacked-out center sections. That was a feature of the original Explorer 242. Not present here. The hands are ultimately polished and orange lacquered at their center. We also have a little Rolex crown between Swiss and made. That's how you know you're looking at the new dial in just a glance. Cyclops eye magnifier. I don't love it on the smaller Rolex watches, but I'm at peace on the bigger dials because it doesn't monopolize the dial. The dial base is black lacquer, and then the hands and the indices are all white gold, so they won't tarnish or oxidize over time. And since the original Explorer 2 was 
targeted towards polar explorers and cave explorers. It is a well-loomed watch. You can see all four hands on the dial are luminescent with Rolex chromolite blue loom. We get new movement. Probably the biggest change with this newer version of the Explorer 2 is that it gets the same movement you'll find in the GMTs. Automatic manufactured caliber 3285, bi-directional winding, 70-hour power reserve. The winding rotor now features a ball bearing rather than the old jeweled staff, so it's more shock tolerant. It has stop seconds. It has independent 12 and 24 hour time zones. It beats at eight beats per second, pivots on 31 joules. It's braced against shock with that rotor bearing, a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance. That balance bears an overcoil hairspring, a Breguet overcoil shaped by hand that allows the watch to keep consistent time in any physical position. That's the advantage of an overcoil. Its mass is centered. The overcoil is made of a blue oxidized niobium zirconium alloy that is highly anti-magnetic. And with a Leica etched Rolex Chronergy escapement, you get a higher degree of operating efficiency, which helps to improve that power reserve. The barrel has not changed except internally where the walls are thinner, allowing for a larger mainspring than the previous generation, and it is rated as a COSC chronometer, but the chronometer certified movement is then cased up and tested in six positions to ensure it runs no worse than minus two plus two seconds per 24 hours as a fully assembled watch, and that is the basis for that Rolex term superlative chronometer on the dial. Rolex has its own foundry. It makes its own alloys, and it uses 904L steel, which, though not harder than 316, is more resistant to corrosion, particularly in the presence of sea salt and sweat. And, of course, Rolex makes its own dials, movements, cases, clasps, bracelets, even the lubricants and the Paraflex shock protection inside the movement. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.